which mm. let's not maybe forget it is that this album has been constructed over over a period of about two and a half years mm -hmm. and i was totally as associated to this album as well um, i didn't remember that i've even composed uh, a few parts of it mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they are still in the album and i'm very pleased to have heard that um, they've you know succeeded to keep that uh, these influences and that freshness you know in other words you would have taken them in one direction uh, if you had your way and that's a direction they didn't want to go and you in turn didn't want to go in their direction Is that <laughs> oh right no to I'd, say? I'm, I'm i'm open to every direction really mm. and uh I don't think it was only a, a question of uh, musical directions and so on, because, mm. uh, you know, I mean, my album, this uh, Out in the Sun album is also a, a very kind of accessible album, and uh, it was not only a question of musical policy and so on, you know, there, there was a lot of other things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, s psychologically speaking, I was very, uh, you know, I went through a very intense period, um, especially the few months or the, the few weeks before I left the band, you yeah. know. And it's been a very, you know, I knew I was going to face what I faced these last few months, mm -hmm. you know. But then now I, I really feel that I'm, I've improved a lot and... Um, yeah, you, know, you haven't been sorry. I don't, I'm not sorry at all, uh, absolutely not. And I'm very happy that, yes, really have found now their true identity and their true selves, you know. Yes. And I think Rick is playing very well on this album. Yes. And I was very pleased, you know, to hear that, uh, you know, this album is, is uh, I think it's a good album, although I'm very, I'm so near, mm. I'm so near it yes. that, because I've played it, I, I'm, I know it by heart, you yeah. know. I'm so near it that uh, it's very difficult for me to judge. But well, it's it, is an, it is. It's an excellent album, and they continue to uh, top themselves, which isn't easy yeah. for anybody. <laughs> and uh, Rick seems very happy to be back. Uh, he right. had got everything he had to get out of his system, apparently, and uh, right. uh, all is well with the group. Now, when you left, you went where? Well, you see, I've learned a lot from from them I've, lo I've learned a lot with yes these last two and a half years as mm. well this, this i mean the two and a half years i was with them mm. and uh, this album which i've just put out i mean which is being released now in the states is uh, which is called out in the sun represents in fact an interim album between my previous solo album, which was called uh, Story of I, yes. and also the, the next album I'm going to put out, because I've got, obviously I've got a lot of plans to announce, I've got a very good news, very good surprises, and uh, ah, plans for the future, future. you know, I haven't lost my time, I haven't wasted my time. Oh no, I I mean, I, you I, know, Out in the Sun is very accessible, it's simple, because I really wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to be accessible, I didn't want to be bothered with a a very heavy uh, conceptual, emotional, mythological kind of well, vibe. It's, you know. the, it's the extreme opposite of the story of I. Yes, yeah. it's the extreme opposite. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's it's got some of the flavors of story of I. I'm, I made sure that I kept mm. some of the colors, you know, yes. of this uh, outfit. And um, I mean, as the co cover suggests as well. You know, I was not yet at that time when I did it, uh, which means about six months ago, I was not definitive about an image. <laughs> I was yeah. not definitive about a, a complete total direction and so on. It's, isn't that difficult to arrive at, Patrick, for someone as multi-talented as you are? I mean, you, uh, uh, you're, um, you, there's a streak of jazz running through your, uh, <laughs> your creativity, a streak of classical... Uh, you're a great soloist, um, you write movie scores, I mean, you, you go in so many directions. I suppose it would be difficult to arrive at a single image. Oh, yes, yes, but I mean, that, that's why I'm trying to, now I'm trying to do a fusion, that's why my next album is going to still be completely different. But um, I've learned a lot through doing my first solo album, I've learned a lot with Yes, I've learned a lot with Refugee, mm. I've learned a lot with Out in the Sun, I've made mistakes as well. Have but I've learned a lot through these mistakes, and mm -hmm. um, 
I know that my next album is going to be a, a very strong mm. one as well. Uh, probably very different from the two others, you know. Mm. I mean. <laughs> you know what the old saying is, Patrick, that um, I, um, we all make mistakes. The, uh, the wise man, the fool makes the same mistakes and the wise man makes new ones. We're going to hear another cut from uh, Out in the Sun and this is Nervous Breakdown. Nervous Breakdown, Patrick Moraz, and we're delighted to have Patrick visiting with us in the studio. We'll uh, take care of some uh, business transactions and uh, hear more from Patrick at WNEW FM in stereo. About your band, how did you get them together? Where did you find them? Who well, are they? Do, do you, by the way, do you know that I'm, uh, I'm uh, based, I'm sort of operational from Brazil now. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's why I, uh, we were just uh, talking uh, of um, when uh, the, the commercials were playing that um, a, a couple of the cuts on the album, Kabbalah and uh, Batucada, reminded me very strongly of a Brazilian keyboard man that was really marvelous named Walter Wanderley. And as soon as I heard this, I thought of him. <laughs> I thought, how great. You know. Really, it's funny, because, you know... I've never heard. I've heard of him, but I've never heard him play. Oh, and, uh, I wish you were. I know you he, he, he had quite a big name. But anyway, I've got this. Um, you know, I, I really needed this time some uh, musicians, which uh, could play my music and uh, whom I, I really respected a lot. And you know how difficult I must be mm. with musicians because I've. I really. I mean, I've been two and a half years with Yes. Mm -hmm. I've played with. Uh, people like Alphonse Mouzon, mm -hmm. I've played people like Andy Newmark, I've uh, done a, a lot of film scores and I'm very difficult in terms of how to play music, how to master interpretation and so mm. on. And also I wanted uh, some new energies as well to, to, to be able to exchange really. Well you've always had an affinity for Brazil. Yes, I, I yeah. always did, yeah. yes. As I recall, we've had conversations about it, and you were particularly taken by the music there. And finally, you know, I'm, uh, through searching, I knew some, some people already from about uh, two years ago whom I met, and um, I've been able to form a band and to, to get together with the band that, uh, you know, you know they, they are like between... 19 years of age and 24 and they are cl all classically trained but they have very strong roots in rock in rock music you mm -hmm. know they love jazz but they can't they can't really improvise mm. uh, although they would like to you know but i know that since I, when we started rehearsing and we've started to put a few things on tape and so on. They've progressed so much, mm -hmm. you know, that it's really incredible. That's good. And they, they're all doubling on instruments. For example, the, the drummer mm. plays um, classical acoustic guitar and he plays all these chorinos, you know. How exciting. All this Brazilian folkloric yes. music, but all the kind of Villa Lobos repertoire. And they compose, each of them, they compose their own music and they've really... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, for my test, I think they've really break, break and broken some new grounds in terms of harmonies and uh, harmonic structures and so on. And boy, know. music could use a lot of broken barriers. There's, there hasn't been a heck of a lot of new uh, uh, feeling in music lately. I agree totally. And uh, I was being very frustrated sure. you know, about that. And uh, that's why now I think that there's, there's a an explosion going to happen. Do you really? And I, from from down from down from there, Brazil? you know. Huh? And I want to be one of the first ones to be associated. You don't with want to be you, you. want to be the catalyst. Never mind the. For, you yes. want to, you want to cause the explosion. Yes, I want to cause sure, it because there are already some people Brazilians who are in the states and who mm -hmm. are very established. Mm -hmm. And um, but but the the real break hasn't been done yet and I, I i i want to be the catalyst i know that i'm going to be the catalyst for that in a way i mean i want to help as well as i want to be helped you know mm. what i mean and uh, i think it's a very good um, it will be a very good thing you know it's an exciting prospect because everybody has been sitting around wondering where music where rock specifically is going and there doesn't seem to be 
and any big place to go. I mean, we have exactly. all we have all the crossovers. We have jazz rock, country rock, folk rock, etc. You see, I'm, I'm basing this this concept of the the new band and the new album on the the, the false opposition of primitivism and civilization, but really in a way that I think hasn't been done yet before. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, for example, there won't be any more. Uh, block uh, time signatures, you know, it, it's the, really the melody which is has got the prime effective of the things, but there will be always a backbone of percussions and mm -hmm. uh, tightening the, the whole thing together, mm -hmm. and the rest will be like electronic uh, music and sounds floating over it, and, and lyrics and uh, songs and things like that. But the this, thing you know. is, Patrick, is that you're so far advanced um, um, theoretically or theory-wise in music. You've been trained, you're highly trained, and uh, you're very much into not only the, the essence of the music, but to the mechanics. Now, I know you're aware that most rock musicians can't even read music, or a good percentage of them. Now, yes. But how will they adapt to this, this uh, new theory? Ah, because you see, I, I I'm not considering it as a as an elitist phenomenon, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to apply to an elite of of listeners. I want to really apply these uh, this formula, these uh, new kind of mm. vibes to to uh, to mass audiences. And mm. uh, you think it can be? Oh yeah, because because in fact, you know, I mean, listen to Out in the Sun. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't uh, this cut of of my album. You wouldn't think it's in eleven four and seven four and nine four. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's mm -hmm. very, you know, it's it's singable, it's rememberable, yeah. and uh, it sounds simple. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure that. M making the people aware of that, and especially the the new musicians, there'll be a new current. You know, mm. like I mean, ten years ago, people used to to play only three chords. That's right. You look at uh, how it's been absolutely evolved. Yeah. You know? Oh, and of course, and then ten years ago, it was only drums and guitars. That was it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, I've talked with Keith Emerson about that, and, and he claims this is why he started uh, uh, his histrionics at the keyboard because he said the keyboard was stuck up in the back someplace and nobody ever took any notice of it. Absolutely, so it started breaking up the piano, so they notice him. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I still think that uh, anyway, whether it's a keyboard, a guitar, a drums, mm. a flute, uh, a, uh, a voice, uh, these things are only the mediums between the conscience of the player and the listener, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether I play keyboards or guitar or flute is irrelevant, or even, uh, even if I sing, you know, it's irrelevant. I'm a musician in my conscience, mm. and I, I, I will always be. And uh, like with this band, for example, we're rehearsing and playing a lot of times without any instruments. You know, we, we kind of rehearse telepathically, you know. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, when we come to instruments, we don't waste any more time adjusting the sounds and so on. Yeah, of course, we, we have to adjust and tune up, but uh, mm. but I mean, we don't have to rehearse ten times the same line, you know, being deaf, deafened by the sound and so on. We just play it once or twice and that's it, because we've already uh, rehearsed our conscience to mm. be able to play the movements through the fingers and the hands and, you know. It's fascinating. And, and I mean, I think it's also a new kind of way to rehearse a, a rock band, you know. It's, 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 well, no one can... Because, because people, people, you know, musicians are musicians in their conscience, if they really are musicians. Uh-huh, yeah. You know. Well, you've always been innovative, you've always been rebellious, uh, you've always <laughs> been uh, an iconoclast, you know, you do exactly what you think is right, and in a way totally different from anyone else, and I guess music needs people like you, so we're, we're lucky to have you, and we're happy about it. We're happy about this album, and we uh, will. I'm sure that the audience uh, will look forward as excitedly as I do to the next one, <laughs> and for the new wave. Yeah, you see. Also, uh, we, we. I'm planning to, to, of course, to to bring this band uh, to the United uh -huh. States and to do some live appearances. You I'm know, waiting for it. Uh, we'll be we'll be looking forward to it. This is my favorite cut from the album. It's truly that uh, very exciting Brazilian feeling. That Patrick gets into it. It's rock and it's Brazilian and it's it's a lot of different things. It's Kabbalah. Patrick Moraz out in the sun. Kabbalah. Patrick Moraz out in the sun. Qu'est-ce que c'est Kabbalah? Kabbalah is um, well, 
it's got several definitions, but I, I only took it as a kind of, you know, it means magic. That's what I thought. In that respect, you yes. know. It's, it's, of uh, course, it, it has different meanings, you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's got something to do with Jewish scriptures and so on. Does but, it? But, uh, I always it, thought it was a, a term for Haitian voodoo, is Kabbalah. As well, probably. Yeah. You know, it's got different meanings. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to play it today anyway, because it's uh, kind of... It's a wonderful sound. I also <laughs> like uh, the other one, um, uh, Batukada. There's another one. Rana Batukada, yeah. Yeah, Rana Batukada. <laughs> That's yours. Who is uh, McBurney that you've written with here? That's the, it is is the same uh, lyricist mm -hmm. and uh, singer that I took um, on Story of I. Ah oh, yes, of course. And is is an Englishman, very charming, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he's very he's a very accessible kind of writer, and you know I I, re I really like to write sometimes with him some songs and. Mm -hmm. uh, I had this uh, urgency about writing a few little songs for this album, mm -hmm. and I invited him to Switzerland, and we wrote, you know. So you, you now you separate your time between Switzerland and Brazil, eh? That's right. Yes. <laughs> Terrible, tough life, Patrick. At any rate, I'm glad that you took the time. I know that you've had a busy and a tiring day, and uh, uh, thank you so much for coming to see us. You're welcome. And um, as I said before, we look forward to the next album. Thank you very much. Why we're enjoying this one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Patrick Moraz and his uh, new album, Out in the Sun. This is WNEW-FM 102.7 on your dial, Metro Media Stereo in New York.